I'm standing in a country which was the first of the former Soviet republics to leave the Soviet Union. They did so on 11 March 1990. I'm also standing in the last European nation to adopt Christianity. They did so in 1387. In the 14th century, this was the largest country in Europe with lands stretching from the Baltic Sea to the Black Sea. Today, it's about the size of West Virginia. This is the only country in the world that has its own national scent. This is the country of Mindaugas, of Gediminas, of Ugaila, of Vitutas, and many other great leaders. This is also the country whose capital Vilnius as one of the best preserved old towns in all of Europe. Join me. Right, just in case you were wondering what season it is here in Europe, and certainly the winter has arrived here in the Baltics, this is the start of a new series in which I'll take you on a Baltic adventure. I'll start here in Vilnius, the capital of Lithuania, and I'm going to take you to Latvia and Estonia and I'm also going to take a ferry in Estonia to Helsinki, the capital of Finland. Finland is nowadays grouped with the Nordic countries and the Baltic countries really only include Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia. Now those three are all part of the EU, the Eurozone, as well as NATO. And in fact, the latest NATO summit was held here in Vilnius in July earlier this year, 2023. They're also all part of the OECD and the World Bank classify the Baltic countries as high income economies. Guys, just to show you, I was taking a chance by filming with my GoPro hand without a glove. This is my other hand, but it's so cold, I'm gonna have to wear this other glove. And hopefully, in terms of filming, that's not gonna cause an issue. I'll get a better grip with my bare hands, but hey, during tough times, winter in Lithuania, it's minus four or minus five at the moment. And I have to resort to, I guess, more precautions. So let me tell you a little bit more about the population of Lithuania and of Vilnius. There are between 2.8 and 2.9 million people in Lithuania and between 560 and 600,000 people in Vilnius at least those are the latest figures that I could find and something interesting that I also found online was that there's a little bit of disagreement maybe some regional banter as well between Riga the capital of Latvia and Vilnius the capital of Lithuania about which is the biggest city the people in Latvia say that Riga is bigger than Vilnius and obviously vice versa here in Vilnius they say Vilnius is bigger than Riga but what is less controversial is that of the 30 biggest Baltic cities, 15, so 50% 50 of the cities are based here in Lithuania. And Lithuania is the biggest of the three Baltic states in terms of population. If you're from the Baltics and you've got a view on which city between Vilnius and Riga is bigger, please let me know in the comments and demystify that mystery for us. You got the historical center, in that direction and the Frank Zappa monument well so I mean that sounds very interesting and it's just over here so let's go check it out and there we go the monument of Frank Zappa here in Vilnius Lithuania and there's some information there it's all in Lithuanian unfortunately but you might ask yourself why is there a monument of Frank Zappa here in Vilnius Lithuania he has no connection to the country whatsoever. However, the people of Lithuania love him for his free spirit and they identify with that free spirit. Hi, hello. Hello, a Beautiful dog, eh? Dog. Yes. I don't speak Lithuanian, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Are you from Vilnius? <laughs> no speaking. No English, yeah. The Lithuanian language is one of the oldest languages in the world. It's certainly one of the oldest Indo-European languages that exist and it's got some connections with Sanskrit believe it or not so it's got a rich history but during the time of the Russian Empire 
It really was only spoken by some of the poorest members of society. Poland and Lithuania share a long history and in the 19th century many of the elite had become Polonized. Isn't that a nice word? Instead of colonized they became Polonized and at the time Lithuania was also part of the Russian Empire so there was a lot of Russification that happened and there was a Lithuanian press ban installed from the mid 1860s until 1904 when the Lithuanian language could not be used in print and obviously if you tell someone they can't do something such as speak or print their language you're gonna rebel against it and in many ways that kind of revived the Lithuanian language as well and a lot more people in society started to speak it in 1904-1905 Russia also had a war with Japan which the Russians lost and they also had a bloody Sunday in 1905 so Tsar Nicholas II had to make some concessions to a lot of minorities he was very weak at the time having lost the war and one of the concessions was certainly that the Lithuanian press ban was lifted hello how are you it's cold huh yes winter Dina. in Vilnius <laughs> your name Dina 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 over dog's name is Dina Dina nice to meet you Dina Dina yes and uh, nice to meet you too sir yes here we go a Lithuanian gentleman yes <laughs> And it's a shame I can't really speak Lithuanian, although I think I can understand it because yeah, they say don't eat yellow snow and I uh, I completely understand what that means. All right, maybe the graffiti was a false trap, fake news, because yeah, I can't understand anything. Right, I am in Yogailos Avenue, which is undoubtedly a reference to Yogaila, the former Grand Duke of Lithuania, who married the Polish Queen Jadwiga. The prenuptial promises were made at Kriva Castle in 1385, and in 1386 he himself converted to Catholicism, he was baptized, and in 1387 he converted Lithuania to Christianity. But more fundamentally, perhaps, the marriage to Queen Jadwiga created the de facto personal union between Poland and Lithuania, and centuries long cooperation followed. So, many of you might have heard of Ferdinand of Aragon and Isabella of Castile, who married in 1469 and who unified Spain. But I'm willing to bet that not many of you heard about Yogaila and Jadwiga who got married and which basically established that de facto personal union between Poland and Lithuania ultimately culminating in centuries long cooperation between the two countries and the establishment of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth in 1569 and I'm gonna make a bold statement I'm gonna say that the marriage between Yogaila and Jadwiga was the most significant wedding in European history. After reading a lot more about Lithuania's history, I also started to think about why it is that we in the West, in the classrooms and in the history books of the West, don't always learn about the history of, say, Eastern Europe. I wonder why that is. Nonetheless, if you do read up a bit more, you will also realize what a vast and huge country this once was and the significance of that wedding the union of Kriva in 1385 and the union of Lublin in 1569 created the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth which I mentioned earlier and that lasted until 1795 in 1795 the Russian Empire took control of Lithuanian lands and Lithuania became part of the Russian Empire. Right, I am in Gedimino Avenue, the main avenue here in Vilnius and undoubtedly a reference to Gediminas, the Grand Duke of Lithuania and perhaps one of the more famous ones, certainly here in Vilnius because he founded Vilnius in 1323. 
and legend has it that he had a dream about an iron wolf on a hill howling very loudly and he went to a magician to explain his dream and the magician said that that is the sign that there will one day be a grand city on that hill she eventually became Vilnius and Gediminas was also the grandfather of Ugaila who I talked about earlier and it was really during his reign that the rest of Europe started to recognize Lithuania as a grand power and that was mainly because of the expansion of Lithuania into Rufinia so Gediminas had a lot of success there yeah just crossing the uh, avenue here because there is a monument which I want to go and check out a bit more unfortunately this is where I'm going to need your help guys help me to establish who Vinkas Kudirka is but certainly a very very grand monument here and I have to say a lovely square here in Vilnius and big Novotel building there with a European Union stars and in fact there's a nice flag of Lithuania as well which I can talk about in a sec just to give you another idea here of life in Vilnius during winter there's a brave gentleman sitting on a bench braving the cold without gloves I have to say these gloves are a lifesaver so if you think of coming to Vilnius in winter or any of the Baltic countries I'm sure bring some of the gloves they really really make a big difference and bring some nice headgear as well to keep your ears warm and yeah I bet this must look really nice at night as well with all the Christmas lights Christmas spirit certainly very very prominent here in Vilnius there you can see the flag of Lithuania it's got three colors yellow green and red so what do the colors all mean well the yellow represents the sunshine and the sun that shines on Lithuania maybe not today but that's what it represents and it also signifies prosperity the prosperity of a country the green represents the lush forests of Lithuania so there are lots of forests in the country and the green also signifies hope last but not least the red signifies the blood of the soldiers of Lithuania who have fought and died for their country a very beautiful flag yellow green and red of Lithuania there are loads of interesting buildings as well here and just look at that stone monument on that building there and it's getting a little bit chilly not that it wasn't chilly before but I think I need a nice coffee or something warm to give my fingers a bit of life because they are actually freezing but whilst we look for a nice coffee place we can admire more of the beautiful architecture here in Vilnius in Gediminas Avenue yeah I've noticed there are not a lot of people with beanies or something to keep their head warm and I don't know how they do it maybe they're just used to it the people of Vilnius if you're from Vilnius let me know how you cope with this weather maybe you're just so used to it I'm from the southern hemisphere and I can tell you I'm not really a winter person I am struggling a little bit yeah, look at Lithuania post-Soviet Lithuania embracing Western brands and a pretty prominent clothing shop as well right I don't really understand Lithuanian but I do think I understand caffeine and I desperately need a coffee maybe not so much of a caffeine boost but just to keep my fingers a bit warm you know in a takeaway cup and I think we've also approached Cathedral Square for Vilnius Cathedral there but uh, I'll talk more about that in a second let me just go and warm up a bit so quite a nice coffee shop here in Vilnius and there's my coffee 2.90 for a cappuccino here in Vilnius yeah, just some of the other things they sell here you can see their lemonade and cola 270 they've got a matcha 
sparkling drink here as well, 280. You can see there's some muffins and cookies and croissant and some nice desserts there as well and uh, some healthy sushi rice bowls as well. I've seen loads of Ukrainian flags as well here in the city so it's clear that there's a little bit of solidarity with uh, people of Ukraine and the other thing that I've seen a lot of so far in Vilnius is this Narfesen or Narfesen kiosks selling coffee and soft drinks and of course I've seen a lot of snow so just a few first impressions well I should really say that I have been to Vilnius before I was here in 2008 so 15 years ago and nothing really looks familiar until now I do remember the Cathedral Square here and Vilnius Cathedral but other than that nothing really looks familiar so far so 15 years ago I'm sure many things have changed as well in the city but certainly this has definitely stayed the same and over there you can also see Gediminas Tower so Gediminas Tower of course named after Gediminas and am I right in saying that that was the hill that he had the dream about the wolf howling so any locals please let me know in the comments but this is definitely Vilnius Cathedral Square as I remember it. I think we've properly hit the traffic as well here. So no doubt this is a big junction. But you can also see the Christmas markets getting ready or some operation probably already. Right, here is the new classical Vilnius Cathedral and next to it is the bell tower and i've read that this bell tower separate from the cathedral is a very uncommon thing outside of italy so many of you might have been to pisa the leaning tower of pisa i've not been there myself but that would be another example of a tower separate from the cathedral and here in vilnius you've got the same thing so I wonder why that is and here's some information and thankfully some information in English as well so there you can see the full name is the Cathedral Basilica of St Stanislaus and St Ladislaus one of the oldest Roman Catholic churches in Lithuania and King Ugaila started building it in 1387 so 1387 of course the year that Lithuania converted to Christianity. So Volnia certainly has a lot of different architectural styles all mixed together and in the old town you will also see more of the Volnian Baroque or Volnius Baroque which was introduced in the 18th century by Johann Christoph Glaubitz. Oh there's a plane bringing more tourists and Residents of Lithuania back to Vilnius. So my understanding is that Glaubitz was a Lutheran leader here in the community and he introduced his own style of Baroque architecture called Vilnian Baroque and that went down a treat because it gave Vilnius a very distinct architectural flavor. And this is why the Cathedral Square getting ready for Christmas. You can see some of the stalls there selling Christmas socks etc. And mind you, the sun is starting to say goodbye, starting to set. And it's not even three o'clock yet. And it's getting even colder. So I have a limited amount of vlogging time left. So maybe I will show a lot more of the old town in another vlog. We will go and briefly check it out now. But I think this is the reality of life here in the Baltics in winter is a limited amount of sunlight of sunshine but yeah just giving you another angle here of the impressive cathedral and last but not least here's a statue of Gediminas 
Gedi Minas. Yeah, like I said, perhaps the most well-known of the Grand Dukes of Lithuania. He wasn't the first though, so I am actually surprised that I've not yet ran into a statue or a monument of Mindaugas, which is considered the first Grand Duke of Lithuania and also the only crowned King of Lithuania on the 6th of July 1253. That's when he was crowned, but he is considered the first of the Grand Dukes. Gediminas over there, perhaps the most famous. And you can see there 1316 to 1341, 14th century. The 14th century is when Lithuania really became very, very powerful and recognized by other European powers. And there's the great man and his horse overlooking the square here, yeah. Cathedral Square. Yeah, maybe there is a statue of Mandaugas somewhere and I've not yet seen one of Vitutas either. So Vitutas, of course, the other grandson of Gedi Minas and he was a key figure in the Lithuanian national revival. Yeah, Gedi Minas, his horse and the Gedi Minas tower over there as well, which I believe is also the location where the Lithuanian flag was first hoisted, was first raised, and there is a Lithuanian flag there as well at the moment. Yeah, here you go, Palace of the Grand Dukes of Lithuania, a very beautiful building, mind you. Right, so I haven't run into a monument of Vitutas yet, but he is mentioned here on this monument of Gediminas. You can see the Vitutas, the grandson of Gediminas, and next to him, his father and the son of Gediminas, Kestutas. And on this side, you have Algirdas, who was the son of Gediminas. Algirdas, also the father of Yogaila. So, all the, I guess, famous Dukes of Lithuania, Grand Dukes of Lithuania listed here. I've noticed many people take their dogs for a walk here in Vilnius. And in this weather, yeah, it's a little bit cold, isn't it? So I wonder how that's going down for the dog. But anyway, guys, I think if I'm reading my directions correctly, we are now in the Old Town Territory. Right, so Pilies or Piliers. Not exactly sure of a pronunciation, but apparently this is a famous street here in the old town of Vilnius. Let's just get a little bit of a flavor of the old town. I will come and explore the old town in a separate vlog simply because I'm running out of daylight to vlog. And I might need a warm drink or two after this as well. But certainly my first impressions is that it is very much getting ready for Christmas, the old town. Yeah, the beautiful old town of Vilnius. So, I mentioned earlier, Vilnius was established by Gediminas, but it was actually Yugaila, his grandson, which apparently established the old town. So, do let me know in the comments if I'm wrong. It became a UNESCO World Heritage Site in the 1990s. Beautiful Christmas lights here in this shop. Yeah, a few more people about here in the old town than in the city center itself, so it's not surprising because this is a very nice part of Vilnius. And presumably also a lot of tourists here. But again, not many people wearing headgear or a warm hoodie or a warm something for their heads. Yeah, just orientating myself here, so town all square in that direction and loads of churches in this direction, so there are dozens of churches here in the old town, here in Vilnius, so for a country that caught up with Christianity only very late, they certainly made up for it, I guess, with the number of churches. Yeah, nice pubs and restaurants here as well. Here you go, some reference to 1918 over there. 
1918 and important here here in Lithuania regarding independence oh gosh wow look at this amazing seems to be associated with a university here in Vilnius just giving you another view here beautiful pastel colors here in the old town yeah one thing I'll definitely remember for years to come perhaps is how cold my hands got today when removing my gloves so while filming often I have to change a battery or I look at footage on my GoPro and I take my gloves off when I do that and actually the tingling feeling in my hands in my fingers from the cold is something that will last with me so even now wearing the gloves I can still feel it so Vilnius you are pretty cold and guess what the mystery of this building here is demystified here thanks to I guess the Vilnius tourism board or whoever put it here have done a very good job explaining the history so you can see their reference to Glaubitz rebuilt the church in baroque style oh there you go the tallest bell tower 68 meters in the old town of Vilnius stands next to the church so I guess it must be that one there yeah just getting a bit of a flavor for the old town here in Vilnius and what a beautiful building that is and it looks like some really interesting street markets here as well some old photographs of Vilnius over there as well and lots of different colored socks and beanies etc yeah there you go Lithuanian archives of what Vilnius would have looked like many years ago I'm sure it was just as snowy back then I don't know what building this is and guess what some more information for us so I have to give credit to whoever did this maybe the Vilnius tourism board or the city council or whoever but just want to say thank you especially the information in English which is great so this is an Orthodox Church and according to legends in 1345 Maria the wife of a Grand Duke Algirdas initiated the construction of an Orthodox Church over here so and this present church was built in 1865 according to the project of Shagin it's a Lithuanian Orthodox parish and a very very beautiful structure so the tourism board or city council undoubtedly have done a good job with some of the descriptions but some of the old inscriptions in the wall certainly still have Russian and I guess Lithuanian there but nonetheless a beautiful city to walk around a very easy walk weather permitting of course it's very cold but it's certainly a very walkable city and a real real nice experience just another beautiful church here you can see the Orthodox Church of St. Nicholas here you go according to a legend Juliana the wife of Grand Duke Algirdas built the first church here certainly a very impressive structure I've noticed the sort of cream red mix is quite popular here in the old town ah yes I do remember this square here from my last visit 15 years ago and obviously that was during the summer months I am very much in winter now but I absolutely recall the city hall now over there and I guess we're not far from the gates of dawn or the gate of dawn and by the way guys if you haven't done it yet please hit the like button on this video it really helps me out with the algorithm I don't have a marketing team or a production team or a production budget to help me with my YouTube videos so please help me out and it's free to do so so where else would you get free content of such high quality 
more people getting ready for Christmas and the town hall in front there yeah there we go gates of dawn which is where I'll take you next and after that I'll go back to my accommodation and show you a room there and hopefully this has given you a good introduction to this Baltics series they will definitely be a lot more content coming soon so do watch out for that geez I imagine the owner of this car will not be very happy palace of the Grand Dukes of Lithuania 1.1 kilometer so the distances I cover for you and in weather like this no I'm just kidding guys an absolute pleasure to have you here tagging along my adventures and we will definitely come back and explore this properly yeah obviously shut at the moment so you know what we're just gonna have to come and see it in another vlog ah oh, here's the gate of dawn guys this is also where a famous photograph was taken in 2008 in fact I'll put it on for you right now what did you think of that comparison in fact it's probably a little bit bluer than I remember it it's probably to do with the overcast conditions the misty weather but spectacular nonetheless and I'm trying to remember the hostel I stayed at at the time I don't think it's far from here at all but this is definitely the one image from Vilnius back in the day that I remember most the gate of dawn and if you were in any doubt about the significance of the gates of dawn here you go this is one of the most significant religious historical and cultural monuments a sanctuary famous both in Lithuania and abroad built on the road to Medininkai I hope I pronounced that right in the 16th century this is the first of the five defensive gates of Vilnius built together with a city wall and the only one to survive till now guys I think I just discovered the hostel I stayed at the last time there it is sent to stay hostel and this is the southern part of a gate which I also remember so what do you call the feeling deja vu I've been here before although hang on no I haven't been here before it was actually quite warm the last time I was here right time to get back to the hotel and just walking here and people are also starting to get home as well I get the feeling this is a little bit of a rush hour here in Vilnius all right everyone I am back at my accommodation and this is my room so you can see a double bed well actually two single beds put together but it's operating as a double bed and I've got some chairs and a table there I've got a TV and I've got a storage space here as you can see inside there a wardrobe in here there is the bathroom so you can see there there's the loo there's the shower and there's the wash basin and a mirror how's it guys so pretty nice accommodation there's not much of a view I am staying on the first floor and there's only a few steps between the ground and the first so there's a view of some traffic but that's not why I'm staying here so I'm staying because of a price and I only paid 110 euros for three nights plus three euros worth of city tax so one euro for every night you're staying here I wonder if that is a Lithuanian thing the city tax because I also had to pay it separate I couldn't pay it on booking.com so that was a bit strange but let me know if you from Lithuania and you know what that's about but all in all I am very happy with where I'm staying and certainly nice and warm it's nice to come home after a long day of vlogging to a location like this and this is more of my accommodation the common areas here you can see there there's a map of Vilnius and a Christmas tree and downstairs there's a common area or a kitchen area here we go you can see a little Christmas tree on the table there and the kitchen 
a common area so they do give you some breakfast options as well I say breakfast options I think you can just come and take any time of the day some muesli cereal teas and coffees there's a microwave and also a fridge over there so very nice and how interesting is this clock over there you know with a cutlery forks and spoons that is quite unique so before i came back to the accommodation i stopped at a supermarket bread some salami cheese bananas look at this apple the size it is absolutely humongous so i'd imagine that they have to import quite a lot of their fruit but i think they've done well here lithuania very good trade deal perhaps Vitutas mineral water, so a very Lithuanian name there. Bought some Vilnius margarine, also a very Lithuanian brand, and then I guess a local chocolate. And the total price is only 1077. So I actually think for all the stuff here, that is not too bad. Right everyone, I am about to embark on a culinary adventure, and I think now is a good time to end the vlog as well. I hope at least this gave you a taster of Vilnius. There'll be more content coming in due course, but also hopefully you're looking forward to some more adventures here in the Baltics. I think it's going to be an epic series and I can't wait to take you along with me. But for now, I just want to say again, thanks for watching my videos and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers, take it easy.